very old uh, technique. People are doing it everywhere for a long time. Um, in North Carolina and South Carolina especially, the Moravians and Winston-Salem did beautiful slip trailing. Um, and in Edgefield, South Carolina, there was beautiful slip trailing. And that's what I look at when I slip trail most. And what they did that I think makes it so good is it's all done really fast. And slip trailing has a potential to be really fluid and have lots of movement. And that's, that's what I think makes good slip trailing. And because they were making production where it all had to be fast. They weren't <laughs> sitting there kind of go, you know, taking their time on everything. It was all wham, bam, throw it out. But it has this sort of wonderful spontaneity, even if what they were making was the same thing over and over again. It was still fast and had that um, sort of rhythm. So planters, I just brought it because it's what I have right now. Um, I do it all in greenware. Um, because I single fire, wood fire, um, and then if you do it, it has to be green so you can glaze it. Um, but you can also slip trail on bisque, I mean on bone dry. You may be able to do it on bisque, but I really don't know anything about working with bisque wear. So this slip, it would probably do fine, and I have the recipe if people are interested. Um, So, just start off with bands. Sometimes, you know, it, it's really whatever you like to do. But uh, and it doesn't come up as you can't really see it as well. Maybe I'll switch to this red slip. This is a slip that uh, it's a red clay that just came out of my friend's backyard. This guy, uh, David Bauer, who makes really good bread. It's a little gooey. Mm. It's not going to work. It's okay. Is it clogged? It's clogged, but it's it's. I wouldn't I wouldn't mess with it. It's fine. Sometimes I'll mark it out. If I'm if I'm doing a design, sometimes I won't. I'll just get it spinning, and uh, pretty slow. If I'm doing a scrolling pattern, which is what I I like these simple things. I work kind of in large sets of things, so I'll make 60 of these and then sit there and slip trail half of them, and half of them won't get anything, and they go in the kiln, and and that's that. So I like to work in sort of runs. I'll do the same thing a bunch of times, and that can be very boring, but it's also how new things emerge. They sort of slowly emerge out of repetition, I find. So that's sort of the basic framework. And then pick it up carefully. I've had a lot of sugar. And I polished, <laughs> and I polished off Doc Belty's uh, eggnog. So. Let's see what I'm going to do. I don't, I usually do this by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. Any what? Not usually. I mean, you do lose some pots, but uh, not really. Not usually. Um, so the slip trailing, which is really nice, and brushwork, for people that do brushwork, they'll say the same thing. It's all about pressure and releasing. And 
that's how you get these really nice kind of fluid and it's really simple but I think it's just it's nice yeah Is yours a thickened slip or is it just straight up slip recipe? Um, I mean, you depopulate it no, or anything? No. Okay. It's just a straight, straight up. slip. I've got the recipe here. Before. It's uh, from this woman named Wink Thomas, but really, I think any white slip will work. I put a little Zerka packs in here to make sure it really pops. Under, I usually use an ash glaze, like an alkaline, a traditional southern alkaline glaze. Don't. Did you mention what clay body that is? This is a clay body um, that I mixed up combined with some zealostone. I just started my making, so I just got set up and uh, I haven't had time to make a whole batch. But it's a lot of clay, it's called Cameron and it's from Cameron, North Carolina. That's probably the, the majority of the clay body. And Mixed with some foundry hill cream, some um, felt bar, and malite, and a few grogs. So. All right. Well, very good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate.